Hey guests and dancers, this is your midterm skill tutorial and review. So I will just make this quick. I will demonstrate everything that is on your tutorial one time and um, it will be up to you to practice and of course ask questions if you have them. Okay, so uh, the first thing is right and left splits. Uh, so right splits is the right foot forward. I, well, I said I would demonstrate everything, so I guess I will. So right splits, right here, we wanna make sure our feet are pointing. We wanna be, be careful that our hips aren't here. We want them to be square over your, uh, over your legs, okay? So you have right, you have left, and middle can be done two ways. You can go sideways and just, you know, straddle as much as you can, or you can go over uh, like this. So technically, I don't quite have my middle splits, but uh, you guys do the best that you can. That's an important stretch to be doing every day, all three of those, very, very important. And the key is that you take your time doing those and doing those stretches. Obviously, just now, I just went right into it, and that's just because I'm demonstrating what the skill is. Uh, in reality, you would take a lot of time to do those things. Next up is chasse step leap. So on the right side, chasse step leap, your right foot would be back, and you would chasse on your right foot, that's step together, step, so you have step together, step. Notice how my foot is pointing and sliding through. So chasse, easy, step together, step. Then I have the step part, which is the left foot stepping through. And now leap, where my back leg slides through, tendu, kicks, and then I would just hop onto that leg. That is a chasse step leap. When you break it down slowly, it's not so, not as difficult. Once you do it faster, um, it has more of a, an exciting look to it. So chasse step leap on the right, and my arms are in opposition. That means like the opposite arm as the leg. And I have chasse step leap. Okay, on the left side for chasse step leap, my left foot is back in B plus position arms in first position, my left leg comes through, chasse down, up, down, notice that sliding down like under the waves feel, step on the right foot, now my left leg swings through tendu, brush into a bot ma, so I'm going through tendu, brush, and then I leap onto that front leg, extending my back leg in arabesque. Uh, and quickly, so you can see the full expression, we have chasse, step. Okay, next on the list is chenets. Also in the comments below, I'll just put the list of the skills. So, now we have chenets. Starts with a tendu, elbow points the way you're going to go. And remember, in Chene, you're just, your feet are right underneath you in first position, releve, and you're just rocking back and forth like this, spotting in the direction you want to go. If you need help on spotting, check out my spotting tutorial video. It will tell you everything you need to know. And if it doesn't, you still have a question, ask me. Okay. So Chene, we have to the right, you can go slow, you can go fast. Uh, on the left side, the left foot is in tendu. The left elbow points the direction you're going to go. And you start with your chest lifted, hips are level, abs tight, looking and getting ready to spot. And spot, 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 spot. Notice that my hands in this turn are almost like turning towards your face and my thumbs are minimal. Um, be careful of doing this 
A lot of times I see this or variations of that. You really want your hand to be a natural extension of your arm so you can be uh, bigger, longer, taller, stronger than you appear, or that, that you can appear to be bigger, longer, taller, stronger, more powerful. Um, because more of you equals more beauty. So the more of you there is, the more beautiful your dancing uh, can appear. So that was Shinny's. Next up is Batma, and we'll just do Batma's Devant, which means straight in front of you. And um, kind of doing a mixture of jazz and ballet styles for these, but you're going to start in a long fourth position with your arms um, in a jazz or contemporary osicum. So you're here, your back foot, in this case my right foot, is going to brush through tendu, and it's going, I'm going to release at the top of the tendu, so instead of bringing it back down, when I get to this point, I'm gonna just let that energy keep going and let it fly up into the sky. So we're going to do this on the right and the left. The key that I'm looking for is a pointed toe that's passing through tendu, and I'm looking for straight legs. Notice that both my legs are straight as can be during those batmas, and the last and most important well, I don't know if I should say most important, is that my back is going to stay totally straight. I'm not gonna hunch forward like that. We don't want that. Sometimes that will help your leg go higher, but we cannot do that in Batma. It just really makes everything look terrible and it really shortens you. It makes your spine look crunched down. And remember when you're dancing, people are looking at your face and they don't wanna see you go, yeah, Ugh, no, no. So what I'm looking for is tendu straight legs and a straight, strong, tall spine and engaged core. That's what helps you keep that spine lifted, okay? So we're gonna do something like this. Kick and down, kick, down. We'll probably do four, kick, down, kick, down. Okay, from the side, I'll do my left side this time. I want you to notice my spine. My leg's not going really, really high. Some of you, a lot of you can kick higher than me. That's great, but it better not be at the cost of your spine crunching, okay? So on the left side, we would do up, down, up, down. See how my spine is staying lifted. Legs are straight, toes pointed. Okay, so that is the end for the dance one midterm. For dance two, three, if we get to it in class this week, if we get through all of these things, they will all be uh, on your midterm and available for our raffle. If we don't, you uh, feel free to practice these over the break um, in your spare time. And, and even if you're in dance one and you wanna start practicing these things that maybe we haven't gotten to yet in your class, you are more than welcome to do that. So um, all of these things, of course, should be done without socks. So I'm gonna remove my socks so that you can see we really don't need them especially for this stuff that we're coming up to next. So the next thing for dance two, three, is your double pirouette um, on your right and left side. If you don't have the double, a single is fine. Um, but remember, you can't do a double until you can do a single. So it's totally great. You gotta start somewhere. Okay, so we're gonna do these jazz style. Um, and that means we'll start parallel. We'll tendu all sicone arms are straight, you go to a uh, fourth position, well, let's see, do tendu, and you'll cut straight back, so try not to do a big rond de jambe, we'll just do tendu and place, and the place is right underneath you, front leg is firmly planted, back leg you're actually on releve, but notice I'm trying to get my hips centered because what's going to happen is uh, my hips really just have a tiny distance to travel. From here, we're gonna push straight up. So you go down, straight up, down, straight up. That's, that's easier said than done. You'll see sometimes it can take a few tries to really find that balance. We call that, uh, when you have good balance and you can do lots of turns, we call that being on your leg. And we're talking about the supporting leg. So if you can get on your leg, see I wasn't on my leg, I fell forward. If you can get on your leg, that means you're gonna have 
really tall, straight, powerful, confident balance. So if you want to get good at turns, my advice is to just practice getting on your leg. Um, and that's muscle memory. Once you find that position of being on your leg, um, and definitely do both sides, guys. Everything, even yourself out. Once you can find that on your leg position, turning becomes a breeze. It becomes something fun, something you can look forward to, but it does take hard work and you cannot give up on yourself. You cannot get too negative with yourself. You just have to keep that free, open mindset, realizing that every single failure, every single time you fall off of your leg is one step closer to getting on your leg. But if we get negative, it kind of makes it almost impossible to ever succeed. So don't count your failures as curses. It's just part of the natural process. We fail all the time. We cannot give up though. We cannot give up and we cannot let our mind get negative. Okay, so dance two, three. One single turn and land here. Um, if you're doing multiple turns in a row, you land preparing for the next turn. If you are just doing one single, you can land and kind of cross over behind your legs um, and you can land arms down or you can land arms up. But that's um, a proper finish for a jazz turn. So if I'm gonna do uh, three single turns in a row on my right side, three single jazz pirouettes, I would do uh, one, get ready for the next turn, two, get ready for the next turn, three, get ready for the next turn. And this is a great exercise to do at home to just get yourself on your leg every time it, it works. And then on the left side, you could do one, land, get ready, trying to smooth out these uh, rough spots. If you guys need to do this better than me, that's your goal every time. Beat the teacher. You can. You will. Good. And uh, now maybe try for doubles. So. Uh, on the double side, remember, we're just trying to go straight up. I like to inhale. Sometimes that helps me pull all my energy up and onto my leg. But it's a delicate balance, right? You can't pull everything out of the ground because then you won't be balanced or firm or rooted. So it's this kind of feeling of everything coming together and also everything lengthening apart. It's the magic of dancing, really. It truly is. So you're here. Um, I'm going to try for a double, so you have spot, spot, and get ready for the next one. Trying to smooth out those bumps and jumps, we don't want that. And spot, spot, and land, get ready for the next one. Now let's say I was going to do a double and land. I'm not going to do more turns after that, I'll show you what that looks like. So you have spot, spot, and land. If you notice, if, if I don't know if there's any way you can watch this in slow motion, as soon as I'm ready to land, I actually want to come here first and then I put myself down. So I don't do jump. I'm actually doing a very controlled landing. It takes time and practice, but you land uh, like so. So it's smooth and easy. Let me show you from the side and uh, hopefully this will be a good example for you. So you're watching this heel, how I'm going to land, okay? So I have spot, spot, and land. Okay, that worked. And next, two more things for you guys for dance two, three. We have the calypso on the right and on the left, and then PK turns. So the calypso, easier than it looks, I promise you. So calypso, you're going to do a high chenet, and you don't always have to do the high chenet. You can also just do a low chenet into the calypso. Typically though, for a preparation, a lot of times we'll see high chenet, low chenet, calypso, but we, we need to be ready to just do a low chenet into the calypso because you might not have the high chenet. For us though, let's do the high chenet. So you have high chenet regular, up, up, then uh, take out those little wobbles, just right, left, low chenet, right, left. The weird thing about low chenet is that your knees are bending and your heel's almost on the ground. It's not forced arch, which you know the term forced arch means you're forcing your foot like this. That's a very useful position, but not for the calypso. So the low chenet is just low chenet. Your back heel goes on the ground to get you total uh, power. So after that low chenet, you go right, 
left, put your left heel on the ground. Now your right foot is going to go through fifth position and brush. So it's going to the diagonal. So you're here from your shin in, put that heel down and brush. You're gonna leap to that foot and remember your right arm and your right leg, they do the same thing, they're going straight. So you are here, then your back leg and your back arm are going to be bent while your upper body arches over. You're kind of trying to make like a little horseshoe. So you're here, you go kick, kick, and you just keep turning out of it. So really uneventful in terms of what's actually happening. It looks way more exciting when you put all that momentum and energy together. So one more time from the lotion that you have right, left, put your heel down, kick. And uh, I like to turn out of it because that momentum, once you really pour yourself into it, it's a lot of energy that you have to reconcile as soon as you do the jump. So you're here, here I just turn onto that put my left foot down and then you can run away or carry on with your dance. So quickly, it looks like this. From the high chine, you have high chine, low chine, calypso. Okay, on the left side, let's break that down. So you have, of course, always starting, uh, proper, confident, um, and you have a high chine, so you go left, right, this is the left side. Low chine, left, Right, now you're gonna set your weight back onto your right foot, even though you just did a lotion A. You're putting your weight down. Left leg tries to brush through. Fifth position, I'll succumb. And you're going whoosh. You're kind of going up and around this corner. That's the energy you wanna to bring to it. So your left leg, left arm go here. Your right arm, your right leg, they're reaching together. We are trying to keep this knee lifted high. Um, we don't want to do it here. That's uh, choreography, but it's not technical and it's not going to give you your best, highest, most beautiful jump. So you're going through fifth position, you're kicking to the corner, and then you're just jumping onto that leg, trying to hit this position into a, like a straight on way here. And then this leg comes through, you can twist, and keep going that way, caring about your business. Okay, one time quick. It goes high shine, low shine, calypso, keep going. Okay, hopefully those were semi good examples of calypso. Uh, you guys are gonna do it better than me, jump higher than me, be more powerful than me. My prime has passed when it comes to those calypsos, I think, so you guys, Passing the torch to you. Rock my world, y'all. Let's do this. Okay, and last is PK turns. So, PK turns. If you're on your right side, your right leg is the pick. Your right leg is the needle that's going to pick. So, PK, it means to prick. That's what we're going to do, y'all. So, my right leg is the PK needle. My left leg bends like a slingshot, so it's bending like this with my legs and I go up, that's the pick. Arms go out, so to the front it looks like this. Make sure your arms don't go way out, but I like to really have a nice, open, powerful, strong position in that PK. So your plie, you peak, you do a quarter of a turn, it's an illusion, you're really hardly turning at all. Once you get to this side, you step, that passe comes down, your arms are in first position, and then you can open again. If you're going really fast, your only positions are gonna be here, PK, down, PK, down. And of course, your leg is truly Ronde de Jambe. So you're going PK, leg Ronde de Jambe, PK, leg Ronde de Jambe, and it's only about a quarter turn. So from the right side, PK, turning, PK, turning, PK. Let's look at the left side. So if I'm going on the left side, my left leg is the needle, my left leg is doing the peak part. Peak, peak. Yes, okay. So your elbow points the direction you're going always. If you are ever doing a preparation 
unless it's choreography and somebody tells you we're starting this way and it's part of the dance, your elbow always points the direction that you are going to go. So you plie on your right leg, your arms are going to whoosh, blast open, your leg does a rond de jambe, your hips are twisting open like this. So your hips are going open, 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 open. Then you have come to, and then you step down back to this corner, arms are in first, you rond de jambe. Again, your hips are going open, 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 open. Good, make sure when you're doing these guys that you keep your tummy tight, especially right here, because a lot of times when we do this open on your hips thing, what that turns into is this. Uh, cool choreography, but not for a technical step like the PK. We want to show our versatility. We want to show that we can express ourselves and be groovy, but that we also got this technique thing on lockdown. So from here, once you open, make sure that in your process, you're squeezing that butt, get those legs underneath you, and squeeze that core so we get that big sway out of our back. So one more time on the left, you have up, down, up, down, up, down. Good, and you wanna have this feeling, once you really start getting that, you're thinking twisting in the hips, and you're thinking showcasing your foot. Um, and then you also wanna feel like there's a little rubber band on the end of your toe that somebody down there is just pulling you. And so you're reaching through those tippy toes, reach, 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 go. Reach, 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 go. While, meanwhile, the rest of your body is rooted and stable. Okay, guys, that is it. You are amazing. Practice these things, especially my dance two, three peeps. Come back after this break and let's be the best middle school dancers there are in all of Dallas ISD. I know that we can do it because in my heart, you already are. So let's knock them dead. Let's uh, give yourself the joy of dance. It feels so good when you put in the work and you learn to do these skills. Uh, Y'all are so awesome, I know we're gonna do it. And please, of course, as always, ask me any questions that you have in class about any of this stuff. All right, happy dancing, love you so much.